I'm your host, Lisa, and you're watching Creative Adventures with Made by Lisa Marie. The goal of this video series is to educate viewers on practical ways that you can harness your artistic abilities and inspire you to push into your full creative potential. Are you ready? Hey guys, welcome back to Creative Adventures with Made by Lisa Marie. I'm your host, Lisa. Today we're going to be talking about something really exciting. It's actually one of my favorite things to teach. So we're going to be talking about composition. We're going to talk about the principles that go into composition and how these are really, really important things for elevating your art from good to great. I mean, I. I believe in the, in the power of composition, so to speak, uh, so much that art isn't just about the practical skills of drawing and painting, it's also about the way you compose your work, and, and I think this is a fun thing to really uh, let your styles shine through. So for the agenda today, again, so we're going to be talking about elements of composition and different things that make, make up a good composition, and then we'll go dive into something more practical. So now that we've got our elements, I'm gonna walk through a real life example with you of a commission painting that I'm working on and how I'll, I'll use that creative problem solving process and use composition to come up with different thumbnail sketches and different ways to arrange the painting and then we'll, we'll pick the final one and then I'll show you, just for fun in the last part, um, a quick time lapse of me actually finishing the painting. So on the agenda today. Um, without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so composition. There are seven different elements that I want to talk about that um, help make up a good composition and um, those elements being focal point, positive space, negative space, rule of thirds, balance, contrast, and movement. So that's, those are the quick seven things that we're going to run through today and um, in order to help you guys really grasp this concept of um, each one of those definitions, I'll be using a painting that I did um, maybe about a year ago now um, at one of the local conservatories um, and I'll just be illustrating where all of those seven elements are seen in this specific painting. So. Focal point, first things first. Um, the focal point is the first thing that you want your viewers to see, essentially, when they're looking at um, at your painting, at your drawing, your photograph, whatever. Focal point is that one thing that is really commanding the most attention. Um, so for this, for instance, um, the focal point is the aloe plant. I would say specifically this main one, the uh, main aloe plant that's stretching up and down, like this, these leaves specifically right there are really, um, really commanding interest. Um, and then the second element is the positive space. Um, so positive space on a drawing or painting is really um, everything that's going to be in the foreground. The positive space includes the focal point, but isn't necessarily the only thing. Like it includes more than just the focal point, but the focal point is thrown into that mix. So again, um, in this painting here, if the focal point is this, these um, particular leaves in the aloe plant, the foreground is going to be the entire aloe plant, so all of these leaves. It's really what's kind of in front of you. If you're thinking of like spatial terms, it's literally what's kind of coming at the front of the page. And then on the contrast, um, the negative space is the third element we'll be talking about. Negative space is what's behind the foreground, so it's the background. So the negative space in here is, is the background, um, which is this orange and pink, pinkish sort of soft texture that I put directly behind the aloe plant. So the positive space, I kind of like to think of it as the lead role. It's positive space is what's in front, it's what's kind of grabbing your attention, it's commanding that attention, and then um, on the contrary, the negative space is the supporting role. So it's really what's behind that positive space, and um, it's more subtle, but without that background, the positive space, the, the leading role isn't going to shine as bright. It's not going to pop off the page. So the background, the negative space is really important um, in helping make the foreground pop. The fourth element that we're going to be talking about is the rule of thirds. Now, the rule of thirds is simply if you take your canvas or your sketchbook paper, whatever you're working with, and you divide it into thirds, so up and across, where those cross hatches meet is kind of a trick that you can use to place 
your main elements into those cross hatches. So for instance, if I were to draw um, the rule of thirds grid onto here, I would make a line going straight down there, straight down there, across, and across. And um, if you can hopefully imagine, there would be a line going straight down here, which is right where my focal point is, which is actually what helped make it my focal point, is because I purposely put it on that left third. And then also, another um, piece is that I purposely put the bulk of the plants um, on around this this lower third here and then again if I were to draw the cross hatches there would be another cross hatch right here where, where the two meet. Um, if you're someone that gravitates towards putting your drawing right in the middle of the page and you're like why this isn't interesting how do I get this more interesting well using that rule of thirds will really help you with placement and choosing different ways to place um, your content around a page rather than just putting it in the middle. The fifth element of composition that we'll be going over is balance. So balance um, in art, in composition, really is more of this feeling. So it's a feeling of balance. Um, and I typically look at balance um, as like a feeling of equal amount of negative space and positive space. So it's dispersed across the, um, the, comp the paper evenly, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's symmetrical. Actually, most of my work is asymmetrical, so balance can be achieved through um, asymmetrical work still. But it's kind of this feeling like in here, um, the, the amount of space at the foreground, the positive space, takes up is pretty equal to the parts of the negative space um, or the background that this, um, that this painting commands as well. So having that e even ratio feeling of about this much as foreground, about this much as background really helps make, um, make that painting or drawing just feel balanced. So. And then the sixth element that we'll be talking about is contrast. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm running out of breath. <laughs> All right, so contrast. Um, there are several ways to achieve contrast. Um, something that I think about is uh, you can use tones. You can achieve contrast through tones, so light versus dark, literally. Um, and here the aloe plant is a lot darker than the background tones, they're much lighter, so that automatically is making it pop, making the foreground pop more because of the contrast. Um, another another way to get to achieve contrast is through positive and negative space. So again, you're using that what's in the foreground to directly contrast what's in the background, um, as well as um, you can achieve contrast through texture and colors. So again, with with painting this aloe plant, I painted the aloe plant first because I knew that was my foreground. And an aloe plant has that, that spiky texture, right? You you really want to see the grittiness and the spikes around the plant. Um, and then to contrast that plant, I and it's also I'm sorry, and it's also cool colors. So there's a cool color scheme. There's lots of blues and greens and almost a grayish tone to it. So I wanted to contrast the background directly with this aloe plant to help make the aloe plant pop by saying, okay, well, if my foreground is this sharp plant, I want my background to be really soft. And if my if my foreground, my, my positive space, is made up of this cool tone color scheme, literally blues and greens, um, then I want my background to be a warm color, color scheme. So I want, um, I want it to have oranges and pinks in it. So all of these elements just really helped create contrast and made this, um, made this piece go from an aloe plant on a white background to an aloe plant, plant popping off the page with complementary colors and contrasting texture and a nice big leading line, um, which actually goes into our last element, which is um, movement. Movement is our seventh element that we'll be talking about today. And movement really is just how the viewer's eyes literally move across the page when they're looking at a piece. So, with this, um, you can achieve movement really effectively by using what's called leading lines. So if there are any strong lines across the page, um, which this is also another one that's more obvious, the, this leading line that goes directly up the page, it's just this really strong, strong element. So um, that this automatically is creating movement as well as up here and here, there's a lot of lines going on. And so this, what this does is effectively cause the viewers to look at that focal point first. So this, and it's, and it's also creating movement by bleeding the viewer's eyes up. And then they kind of circle back around to these other strong lines and these lines. 
and then they get to the background and it creates this kind of circular movement throughout the page which helps keep your piece interesting and really makes for a dynamic composition. So again, we just covered the seven different elements that make up a good composition which are focal point, positive space, negative space, rule of thirds, balance, contrast, and movement. So now we're gonna go jump into a real life scenario. How to make this practical, right? How to go about actually applying those seven elements to your compositions and creating something that's really effective. For a real life example of how I'm using composition to, to creatively problem solve um, on a piece that I'm working on right now in real time, um, I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look of this commission painting that I was asked to do. So the scenario is this. Someone came up to me and said, Lisa, I love your work. I'd love to have one of your paintings. Um, I don't know exactly what I want, but I know I want these elements. Can you do this? So I said, sure, what are the elements? And I'll, I'll work on arranging it. I'll, I'll draw some sketches and kind of come up with the composition and we'll do this painting for you. So they were like, okay, the elements are, I want a, a Chicago city skyline because they're from Chicago. Um, they want a sailboat because they love sailing and they'd also like a sunset. So with those three elements, um, those are the three elements we'll be working with today. And um, I'll take out my sketchbook right now. Um, sketchbook, I will use a ruler to make thumbnail sketch boxes, as well as um, the pencil and eraser. So since my canvas is actually, um, it's, it's, a, it's three feet long, or three feet wide by two feet tall. I'll be drawing out um, quick little thumbnail sketches that will be horizontal in landscape. So it's probably about that long. So now that we have um, some boxes to work with, um, I'll start kind of penciling in the rule of thirds grid. So draw a line there, line there, it's a little off. So that's what our first um, canvas will look like. So. Let me just first go ahead and draft um, where I might want to place these. So let's say my, my, my horizon line is somewhere up here and I want my boat to be on this cross hatch over here. So I'll draw, draw a boat and if that's where my horizon is, let's make the city skyline somewhere around here. Okay gonna block it out, maybe draw in the Hancock and Sears Tower and little buildings. Okay, so that's that's about where I'll put that. Um, now if the boat is close like this, um, I'm already finding a problem here. The mast is gonna come up way higher than my canvas will allow, so this I can already tell is not working. And also my sunset would be pretty much covered. You wouldn't really see much of it. It would be mostly water, which is still kind of an interesting composition, but I'm not loving it. So let's go to the second one. Again, we'll draw, draw our rule of thirds grid. It's not perfect, but it's a general idea of what that might look like. Now, I wanna see what it would look like if the city was a lot bigger. So maybe we'll make, we'll make the city come down here on this, um, this rule of thirds, if that's the horizon, and maybe like the Hancock will be really big and big buildings are, we're really close up to the city in this one. Okay. That might be interesting. And then maybe like a little boat goes here. And the sunset's kind of peeking out from behind with the water and the waves. So that's another option. Um, that again, I'm just, I'm just playing with these 
simple rules um, and kind of working through my composition um, really based on the rule of thirds and then trying to figure out, okay, what's working, what's not. Um, something I'm thinking about right here is I really want my sailboat to be the main, the main focal point, if you will. I want that to be the first thing that the viewer is going to look at. And here it feels like the buildings are, would be more of that dramatic piece. So, um, I don't think that's exactly working for what I was envisioning. Um, so let's, let's try working again on making the sailboat a little bit bigger. Um, in this one, the sailboat is too high up because the, the mast itself is coming off, but I really do like the lines that the mast creates. It creates that moving, that movement, that leading line. And I want to play off of that a little bit more. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. So if we, if we kind of put the boat down there um, and give ourselves enough room, still probably need to make it a little smaller. There you go. And now we can kind of proportionally fit that sailboat in here. Um, okay, and then that leaves us Maybe keep that horizon line on the on the lower third again, and put that city back to, um, to where it was up there. So it's a similar composition, but we're just seeing more of the boat here now. And then again, the the sunset would be kind of behind here and peeking through the sails maybe a little bit. So I'm already liking this one better, except it does feel like a, a little static, I guess. Um, it's kind of boring, <laughs> so to speak. I want I want there to be something more dynamic, even with the city. I want it to be more dynamic without without it actually um, becoming the focal point. So I think I have an idea. Um, I want to use some type of like leading lines to get to get the viewer's eyes to the city, but also still have the sailboat. Um, the sailboat would be the main focal point. So I'm actually from Chicago and I'm thinking about this one view of the skyline where there's actually this walkway that you can look down right by, you know, you're on the beach looking down and to the right side is the city and to the left is the water. So I'm thinking about what if we, what if we switched and put our boat over here to the left and kind of came over that cross hatch. We'd have to make it smaller though so that it could fit. Um, and really make sure that whole entire sail is just coming through because it gives us that nice leading line. But then, so the walkway that I was talking about, it's this view of the city where if you're on North Avenue Beach, you can literally see like the skyline up here. And it's, it's a really cool view of the Hancock building actually. It's like right there and then We've got some buildings coming off there, and then it kind of goes to these smaller buildings, and then it ends. It's this really cool view. And then there's also literally like the sidewalk right here. So it's this perspective of the, the person standing right here and looking off into the city, and then there's the water where the water meets the city. And then we can maybe do some type of cool sunset, maybe put in some big dramatic clouds and everything and we'll have to um we'll have to make sure that that this boat is even maybe like lighter than the rest of the city so that it does pop and add that contrast but i think i'm, I'm really liking this option because of these leading lines i think are really dynamic and interesting there's this leading line that moves you to the city there's going to be this strong vertical leading line this this feels like a really dynamic piece um I think we have our solution. Okay, so now that we have our final composition mapped out, we went through a couple different um, scenarios that could have worked and really picked the, the, the one that's most dynamic. Um, I think it reflects my style a lot too. So I'm excited to jump in to the painting. Um, I will show the time lapse right after this so you guys can also see kind of a look at how this came together and um, turned out. 
But again, thank you so much. I hope you learned and enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful for you um, in creating compositions and, and creating that as part of your skill set when making art. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything, feedback, want to say hi, email me. I love I love hearing from people. I love talking. So my email is madebylisamarie at gmail.com. Again, I'm here for you guys. Um, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the time lapse, and I'll see you next month as I teach another plain air painting video. Thanks so much.